Lions Show. I'm your host, Patty Wendling, and today we are featuring uh, two sergeants from the Eden Prairie Police Department. We have Sergeant Tom Lowry. Welcome to the show, Tom. Thank you, Patty. And Jordan Kaus. Chorus. Chorus. Yes, thank welcome. you. Welcome. No problem. Uh, we're featuring these uh, sergeants because they are part of the drone program, which is a growing program in Eden Prairie. And we're going to feature, uh, uh, ask them some questions about the drone program. So first, we're going to learn a little bit about, about you both. So sure. uh, we'll start with you, Jordan. Tell us a little bit about... Uh, how long you've been with the Eden Prairie Police Department? Yeah, so I grew up in Eden Prairie. I'm from Eden Prairie originally, oh, so great. it's my hometown. And uh, I've been in law enforcement just over 12 years in total. Worked in North Dakota for a couple of years, a few years, and then in Wisconsin for a couple of years. And then I've been with Eden Prairie for the last six and a half or so. Great. And so um, it's been a great end goal for mine to be, be back here, be back home, and that's it's, I'm happy to be here. So yeah, it's been good. Fantastic community. Yeah, totally. Yeah, we we love it too. And how about you, Tom? Uh, I've been at Eden Prairie for uh, 24 years and uh, started out in Maple Plain. I was there okay. for seven, so I'm trying to finish my 31st year this year. And uh, fantastic! That's been, so great. Uh, opportunity to do a lot of different jobs within the police department. So really a great agency, and really have enjoyed it. Wonderful. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the Eden Prairie Police Department in general. How many uh, officers do we have at Eden Prairie? Yeah, what are we at, 74? I think 74 is what we're approved for. And, you know, with anything, we're constantly hiring. So yeah. I think we're a couple below that. But we're always in the process. We're backgrounding a couple right now. So oh, that's so yeah. great. And uh, Eden Prairie gets rated as one of the top communities in all categories so many times in, in different publications, best places to live in the country and things right. like that. So um, what do you see as, as uh, Eden Prairie as a safe community? Um, do you want to speak to that at all? Yeah, I think it's uh, top notch, <clears throat> I, I really do. Uh, when we've had issues uh, in the past, I feel like our approach has been really get focused on the issue right away yeah. and be very proactive and visible. Mm -hmm. um, and if that meant putting extra staff on, the city has always stepped up to do that. Yeah, yeah. As a as a resident, I feel we feel really safe and and wonderful in the community, and we love seeing you guys around all the time uh, at some of our events, Scooter Days, and right. and mm -hmm. you know other events that happen in the in the Twin Cities. We love to see you guys and your presence, and we appreciate you very much. Yeah. And, you know, Eden Prairie Lions has always had a really close tie with the police department. Um, one of the things that we've been doing recently, as our viewers may remember on the show, is featuring um, the benefit beneficiaries of our, of our fundraising that we do. So 100% of the proceeds that the right. Eden Prairie Lions raise at all of these events, like the Pancake Breakfast or Schooner Days or... Uh, the wild game dinner, anything like that, goes right back into the community. And of course, the police department is an important, integral part of the community. So um, we recently made a gift to the Eden Prairie Police Department to enhance your drone program. Do you want to speak a little bit about the drone program in general? Um, yeah, maybe I can touch on the drone program and sure. then maybe Jordan can touch on the, um, the you know, the, the funds that the gift was directed towards sure. and uh, our uh, drone program itself started in July 2020. Um, I was able to weave it into a capstone of my bachelor's degree. Um, oh cool, that, congratulations. Yes, the city, That's city helped me pay for. Um, so I used those uh, tuition dollars for that and uh, researched the drone program and kind of made that part of my capstone and then was able to do the selection of the team and uh, um, then Jordan got promoted and they let me just slide him right <laughs> into a team lead position. Um, so the two of us run the program now and we have uh, four others on the team. Okay. And uh, That's a nice size too, yeah. isn't it? Because it's, it's big enough and small enough that you guys are tight. Yeah, yeah. it is. And we, we train monthly. Um, five of our staff are sworn officers that, who go on duty and then can deploy on duty. And then one of our staff members is a reserve officer, uh, okay. which is great because he's a volunteer for the city, but he's, 
he had the training before any of us did, the Part 107 pilot training, because that's his business um, on the side wow. that he does for himself. And so to not include him was kind of a no-brainer um, for us to just select him to help us get this going because he, he was used to flying in controlled airspace and getting the authorizations that we all have to work through because Flying Cloud Airport is, of course, in our jurisdiction. Yeah. So. Right. So yeah, that's kind of the nuts and bolts of our team. And like I said, we train monthly and um, we kind of have four main aircraft we're trying to get to and we're pretty much there. And now one of the other big hurdles was trying to get a dedicated vehicle so we could have our drones deployed more rapidly on duty. Yeah. And that's something Jordan can talk about. And that's where, you know, the money was gifted to Sure. Toward. That's so great. Yeah, do you want to speak a little bit to, uh, on that? Yeah, well, and up to this point, you know, we've, what what the program looked like on patrol was an officer would go grab a couple of these cases. You can see some of them sitting here yeah. um, and mm -hmm. throw it in their squad, and it's everything's packaged up, and it's very minimal of what they have. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's there's time involved with unpacking, setting up, turning everything on, and you're, you're kind of limited on your overall capabilities without a vehicle that's dedicated to support you. One of which is charging batteries because we these run on batteries, not gas. And so, right. especially in cold winters, they, they go through batteries pretty quick, and especially if it's windy. Yeah. And so having that capability to be able to recharge batteries and uh, be able to see what your the drone sees without having to look at a little screen um, will be huge. So what we're doing, and currently as we speak, the vehicle's being upfitted, um, is we have a Chevy Tahoe that's it's a squad car, mm -hmm. but it's being fitted out to be a UAS vehicle for patrol. So Fantastic. The, yeah, and so some of the funds uh, went towards purchasing and, and outfitting the back area, the cargo area of mm -hmm. that vehicle. And in that space, there'll be a, a big TV, probably 32 inches, um, charging ports, um, you know, connections for listening to different radio channels, including the FAA radio to listen to. Right. Um, um, manned aviation that's flying around the area. So it's so uh, it's going to be a huge asset and make us that much more effective and capable. I think it's important to share with the viewers, too, what some of the missions are that you use these drones for, because that is very enlightening. I mean, yeah. just the little conversation we were having before um, was I had never even thought of yeah. rescuing and stuff like that. Yeah, so. and, and um, Tom had alluded to earlier, getting down to about four drones. So our main goal is to have two exterior and two interior options, mm -hmm. um, one primary for each and one backup for each. And the smaller backup backup versions of each, both are very still very capable, mm -hmm. are the two that would be living in that squad and being on patrol at a, any given time on duty. And then the two bigger main ones would be uh, meant more for like team callouts for a bigger incident or a prolonged sure. incident that required more than one person on duty so so Tom do you want to give an example say of, of some of the uses? yeah um, we are typically busier in the cold weather months mm -hmm. um, for a few reasons some of our technology works better when um, trees don't have foliage covering the ground sure um, and if we're Makes using a lot of sense. thermal technology um, in the cold weather months to see a human temperature uh, it's obviously far more evident yeah. Yeah, yeah, accurate yeah, and um, sure. easier to use the technology. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, it's also the human body's exposed to elements, and it's all that much more critical that we're deploying in a timely manner and right. we have what we need to support our team in one spot because it's not only, um, yeah, we might be looking for a person that's missing, um, but we also have to protect our team. Like, you know, if we're right. out trying to use fine motor skills to fly a drone, we have to stay warm too mm -hmm. to try and do that. Otherwise, our team members are gonna suffer as well. And so just to be really effective, to be able to keep them in a warmer environment and yeah. still do that mission is huge. And then we're not sending out a rescue team of people, which would have been the traditional way to do that. Of course. And you're having people twist an ankle or Right. You know, have exposure. Slip, yeah, and, kind of thing, and yeah. so can search a much bigger area much more effectively with the drone. Right. Um, and then in a very organized manner because we can program the drone to fly a grid if mm -hmm. we want to do that. Um, and it's not just, you know, you're not just looking for bad guys. You're protecting citizens that may be vulnerable, like children, as you yeah. were saying, or, right. or maybe seniors with dementia or, you know, someone who's wandered out into right. the cold 
and isn't prepared for the weather. Yeah, a lot that of, kind of thing. yeah, a lot of the the missions for looking for people are exactly what you said. Yeah, kids, whether they're autistic or just wanted to run away, mm-hmm. you know, um, are aren't generally dressed for the weather when they do that. They don't mm-hmm. plan ahead. And they're not wearing coats. Right. Same with you know elderly folks that are you know maybe have dementia or whatnot, mm-hmm. and they're not they're not prepared to stay warm in those environments, and so. Yeah. Um, and, and that includes, you know, suspects as well. If they mm-hmm. flee from a vehicle, they're not, sure. you know, they're just trying to get away from us. They're not right. planning what they're going to wear when they do that. So, um, and that's just as much of an emergency as any, you know, when mm-hmm. there's anyone out there without a coat on or whatnot, it's it's important. And I remember a case a couple of years ago with a gal that um, got disoriented in a, a decent sized park in the city um, late at night one night, probably eight or nine o'clock and got turned around um, in the, you know, I don't know what time, it was middle of winter, mm-hmm. but um, got turned around and couldn't figure out how to get back to her vehicle and was not dressed for the weather and kind of sat down on a bench and kind of that was what it was going to be. And so we ended up flying out there with the drone. And like Tom said, um, you know, that could have taken hours and hours with, you know, 100 people to mm-hmm. walk through that park. And we didn't even know if she was in there. Mm-hmm. We assumed based on the location of her mm-hmm. vehicle. But yeah. with an educated guest, we were able to launch the drone and start a, a, a systematic approach to searching with a thermal camera. Yeah. And we found her, I don't know, within 15 or 20 minutes. And she was to the point where we had to carry her out because she couldn't walk on her own mm-hmm. because of the temperatures. So yeah. it was... It's definitely a time saver, a force multiplier for sure. And, right. and uh, you know, who knows in those temperatures that were single digits, you know, yeah. what the outcome could have been otherwise. So. I mean, the cold is no joke. I did the polar right. plunge this yeah. past year. Right. <laughs> and I tell exactly. you, when your body goes through that kind of change in temperature, yep. it's something else. But yeah. it's um, it shuts down the, the systems in the body. So right. it's not surprising that this yeah. person couldn't walk. Well, I mean, to me, it's... It's using, it's using the resources for, for such a good cause. Now, we also happen to have some of the equipment yeah. here. So um, let's take a quick break, and, and then we'll take a look at the equipment. Hello, Lion Richard A. Claddy. I edit the Eden Prairie Lions show. Short break, major announcement. Our annual Eden Prairie Lions Club Pancake Breakfast, please mark this date down, Sunday, April 14th, that will be held at the True Friends Camp at Edenwood, 6350 Indian Chief Road, Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Okay, fantastic deal for the whole family, fun for the whole family. Single ticket, $10. Family ticket, $25. Children under five, free. That Once again, please mark this day down. Eden Prairie Lions Pancake Breakfast, Sunday, April 14th, 8 a.m. to 12 noon. Fun for the whole family. Hope to see you there. Okay, let's get back to the Eden Prairie Lions show. Sergeant Jordan Corris with uh, Eden Prairie Police Department and we uh, have here with, with me is Jack Welter. Uh, he's an officer. He's also a member of our uh, UAS team, the drone team that we operate for the police department in the city. Uh, with us here we have one of our biggest drones um, and this is a Matrice, a DJI Matrice M300 and we're going to unpack it, get it set up and show you guys what it looks like when it flies. Okay, uh, officers, why don't you tell us a little bit about the equipment that you brought in, the beautiful equipment. So we'll start uh, with you, Jordan. You've got this big piece of you know, equipment in front of you. What, yeah. what is this? Tell our viewers. Yeah, so we brought, um, earlier I talked about how we want to have a primary um, outdoor and a primary indoor. These are both of those. So I'll let Tom talk about the indoor one. But this is our uh, DJI Matrice M300 right here. This is our primary outdoor drone. And... And um, this thing's a pretty cool piece of technology because, one, it's robust. It can carry a, t- a ton of weight um, and can fly in all sorts of different elements, which gives us a capability that we didn't have prior to getting this one. Um, and that means flying in rain, high speeds, high-speed winds, snow. 
Um, it really it can fly in pretty much anything, even down to below zero. We've flown it before, so it's it's a pretty cool piece of technology. And the main the main thing you can see here is that it can have multiple different types of attachments on it. Um, and right now, this is our, our main camera on the right here. Okay. Um, this one has a high resolution thermal camera, um, a 23 times optical zoom camera, which allows us to from nearly 400 feet zoom in and and practically read your phone. Not that we can, but um, it's it's pretty impressive the zoom capabilities on that on that camera. It also has a wide angle lens and a uh, infrared laser rangefinder, which allows us to help triangulate locations or pinpoint things on a map. So, very it's, cool. it's it's it's, all, it's a very cool piece because it's all in one unit there. Um, and this other one over here is a infrared spotlight. So we have both an infrared spotlight and a white light spotlight. So a white light spotlight <coughs> is visible light, just like out of the lights in the studio here. It allows mm -hmm. us to be able to see it with our naked eye. Right. The infrared light is invisible to the, to the naked, eye, naked eye, and you would need uh, like night vision goggles or something to be able to see those. So um, it allows us to illuminate a subject if we're in like a tense situation without potentially provoking them to, to be more aggressive or whatnot. So right. um, and our SWAT officers as well as <laughs> this camera can both see that infrared light and we can see like it's daylight at night without Amazing. having any light visible to the, yeah, to the naked eye. Yeah, that is eye, so. unbelievable. So how many uh, pieces of equipment can be on that simultaneously? So two. So okay. um, we also have, so like I said, we have a white spotlight, this infrared one. We also have a speaker and uh, we have preloaded commands in there and directions in a variety of different languages so that uh, regardless of the situation, hopefully we've got a a batch of directions uh, in that language to be able to push play on. And it doesn't rely on the, the pilot or the operator to be able to speak those languages to give those right. directions. So it's a great resource to, to have at our finger at our fingertips and available for patrol as, as <coughs> needed. But um, it's, it's a pretty cool thing to have. And um, you can, you just unplug them with a little, you push a button and twist it and it comes off and you can put a new one on. So. Um, it, Again, it's pretty, need for speed, right? So that if you in an emergency yeah. situation you have to yep. change it up, you could. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool. And with the it takes two batteries, and as you can see over here, thank you. We have one battery here, just for demonstration purposes. But it takes two of these to fly, and these these are heavy, right. big pieces of tech right here. And uh, with those two batteries, it can fly anywhere from thirty to forty five minutes, depending on the air temperature, wind speeds, and how many attachments you have on the bottom here. Sure. So. It's, it's a pretty cool, capable piece of tech. And the other main benefit with it is we see one controller there, but we actually have a second one with this one. And um, we operate with two pilots to, to fly this one rather than one person. It can be operated with one, but mm -hmm. we choose to have one person in charge of just flying the drone and maintaining control of the, the actual flight of the, the aircraft. And the other person uh, manages the cameras or the attachments that are on there. So that it's dividing the, uh, the, the tasks at hand so you're not overwhelming one person. So smart. So yeah. it, it's a very cool thing. And they're, they're both on gimbals, which keeps it perfectly level. So it can, the drone can be flying at, you know, a 30 degree bank, you know, if it's super windy to just to compensate, but the, the camera feed will be perfectly smooth. You'll have no idea that it's, it's working that hard to stay level. So it's pretty cool. So cool. And then you also, uh, Sergeant Lowry, Tom, you have the indoor one. Yeah, this is called uh, Brink Lemur. This is a U.S. made indoor tactical aircraft. It is uh, equipped with white lights you can see. We have optional lighting we can add for uh, night vision. Uh, so it can fly in the dark. It can fly in conditions where uh, traditional aircraft would require GPS. Um, this can fly in a complete manual mode, which is great in Let's say we have to go search um, an underground tunnel or a culvert for a person. Um, technically, that's a confined space that we don't want to put a person into. So if we can fly a drone in there and keep someone out of harm's way, uh, assess what we have, and then direct the resources that we need, that's kind of the, the whole goal to this. It's also um, the primary drone we would use in support of our uh, tactical team. Um, so if we can put the drone into a house, let's say there's a barricaded subject that might be dangerous, might be armed with a weapon, if we can fly a drone in and figure out where the subject is in the home, then we can isolate, Right. we can land this, and it actually has a SIM card in it, so we can communicate by way of a speaker directly, remotely, with the subject. Um, 
So it's, it's also kind of dubbed a negotiations drone. So we can do two-way communication. We can give a message. We can listen to their message back. Um, meanwhile, it's recording all of that for evidentiary purposes if it's needed. Um, and again, this drone is just designed like many, uh, unlike many others, um, it's built very, uh, it's very, very durable. Uh, it has a carbon fiber printed frame. Right. Um, and it's just extremely durable. Um, and what it, we have a, a glass breaker attachment. If we would have, say, a person in a vehicle that's barricaded inside of a vehicle, we can break a window with this drone as well. Um, and this is the controller for it. So it is different to fly than that. It's, it's a higher training level um, and proficiency level to fly it um, because it is a drone that can fly without GPS. Right. GPS helps stabilize all the other drones right. out in space. And so, um, but yeah, this is a great interior option for us. It's one of two that we have uh, for room clearing, um, seen in the dark, flying into places that you would never be able to fly with most other types of drones because of its design. And then something we can do with all of our drones is video stream, live stream the video to command or to anyone involved in our operation that needs to see that image, uh, which is also really advantageous just for that big picture overview of a scene, directing resources, being the most efficient, uh, being we have the airport in our city, if we have a plane go down in a remote area like along the Minnesota River, mm -hmm. we can get a, a drone up in the air and then figure out exactly what we have so we can direct resources into that. So um, we can really... And then document the scene the whole time we're doing that. Mm -hmm. So um, in the technologies Jordan mentioned on the big drone, um, all of those images get recorded onto an SD card. So whether it's whether we're actually displaying the image of the traditional camera or we're uh, displaying the thermal image, all of those are recorded as a separate file. So when it comes to evidence later, uh, if we want to see the zoomed out view of a scene, we're going to have all of those recording formats separate as separate files. So it's really great evidence if it's needed later or even for, say, an after action report or a debrief. Right. Uh, then we can assess and better our process and say, hey, we could have improved on this or that. Yeah, it, um, it's so And great. having that as a resource is huge uh, for our staff and just being efficient with our resources and, yeah. and how we park and how we approach, how we do everything. It's great for debriefs. And now you'll have, a, uh, you'll have the vehicle outfitted to, to be able to transport all of this to the yeah. area of need. Yeah which is fantastic. And the one thing I don't think we mentioned with regard to that vehicle is in as much as this gear is going to be installed in a Chevy Tahoe, uh, we have had several Chevy Tahoes in our agency and we've been able to move that gear from one Tahoe to the next. So in as much as a vehicle might last four years, uh, the, the gear inside of it can be in service for 15. I mean, so, oh, that's fantastic. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's it is a big, uh, upfront cost, and that's why um, the Lions donation for this was particularly helpful because this wasn't one we really budgeted for, but it was additional cost. So it was a huge assistance, and we were really grateful for that. Yeah, it's our honor to be able to help in any way. To occasionally like structure fires with the thermal, you know, thermals can see through smoke. And so we can launch this thing over a structure fire and then provide a live feed to the fire chiefs and they can direct hoses and whatnot. We can see hot spots. We can pinpoint all that. So it's, it's really a, a cool tool that extends beyond just the police. Grass fires, for example, are yeah. notoriously hard to combat because you can't see where the hot spots are. Well, this is something that can see it easily. And, and, we and it makes so much sense to be working hand in hand because right. we're all trying to do the same thing right yeah better the community and right protect and, everyone and really over the years we've had a lot of this technology we've had cameras we've had thermal imaging right. we've had night vision but we've never had it airborne yeah. and so we've been able to fly with our drones um, sometimes when state patrol helicopter can't fly yeah. when we were talking about the inclement weather we've flown in there's no way the state patrol helicopter would have been up in what we flew in so yeah. it's they all have their good and their bad. Um, mm -hmm. And so obviously these are 
far less expensive to operate than a helicopter. So. Well, and, and, <laughs> and less dangerous for and, the personnel. And very I mean, immediate deployment. You yeah. Know, so. You don't have to worry about a person putting a person's life at risk being up in a helicopter. You right. know what I mean? When you've got this. You know? Yeah. Yeah, and we, uh, you know, kudos to Tom when he started the team up. You know, he's super passionate, and that's what, you know, you need someone who's passionate about these things, and everybody on the team is yeah. passionate, but to have Tom, you know, be well, passionate from the get-go to get this thing up and rolling is huge. I never thought that I was going to be able to do uh, anything related to aviation in law enforcement, and that was always, you know, something I had an interest in. So. Joint production of CCX Create, Southwest Television, and BCAT. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good job. Elvis has left the building. <laughs> and I'm being How long have you had this drone? Uh, we're coming up on what? Three years now? Three years. We're going to fly it a little bit over around yeah. that bobcat over there? Sure, yeah, we'll take off and we'll just keep it like right around the height of the roof or yeah. something for you so you can get video. And then, uh, How high are you going to go up? As high as you yep, want, but uh, I'd say just up to the floor, tree so level there. Is that high enough? Uh, it has yep. IR capabilities as well as thermal capabilities, uh, infrared technology for uh, yeah. uh, working with squad teams and stuff like that, and the camera on it itself. If we can do a uh, Oh yeah, yeah. I can see it now. Yeah, there we go. Bring it back in. This will probably...